I'm uh, delighted that uh, I'm with you. That means uh, I am with you uh, around the world and you are with me uh, from around the world uh, uh, discussing something that I think is of importance to, to uh, you, your companies and all of us. Um, let me share a couple of uh, thoughts with you uh, over the next uh, few minutes. And uh, I hope that uh, um, you find them as uh, thought provoking as I intend them to be. What I would like to do is to uh, discuss with you two terms that are uh, incredibly important and uh, relevant and also sexy. Everyone talks about pivoting and every everyone talks about perseverance and uh, we don't really know what to do just now to get out of this very well until uh, at least uh, 2025. So um, if you allow me to uh, set things into perspective, uh, then you uh, may enjoy uh, this, uh, this picture that I've taken from uh, a research project. Uh, it's called Big History. And they uh, try to uh, visualize and uh, integrate history as it happened from uh, the Big Bang or before the Big Bang, from nothing to everything that we have today. And uh, the long-term perspective helps us to understand better what is of matter, what really matters. And so when you see the modern revolution, uh, you are almost uh, where we are today. So. Uh, when we look at this, um, it is pretty clear that uh, survival matters. And um, survival in a business context often also means success. Um, not merely surviving, but thriving is what we try to help our organizations with. And uh, that is hard if we don't know what lies ahead. And if the future, as is its nature, is inherently unknowable, no one has ever come back from the future yet, then we need to figure out how to deal with the problem of surviving going forward into the future while we don't know how it is. And, um, Things have to change, absolutely. Things have to change. But what things and to what degree, that is a great, great uh, uh, comment that you've, I've just seen popping up here. Um, what I also want to um, remind you of, that you had all things sorted. You know, remember the end of 2019, it was looking great. Uh, you had your strategy ready. You had everything designed. Uh, designed for uh, uh, delivering to customers value for money. So the DVM strategy was ready to go. Uh, it was either, uh, uh, well, it was uh, an escape uh, if you were still stuck in not having much to offer and charging too much, or uh, you had the idea of uh, moving towards something where you add a lot of value and maybe uh, charge a bit more than average. You were uh, thinking about how to implement or continue with your strategy that uh, delivers uh, low prices at uh, slightly economic uh, value levels. And um, when you overlay this with what's going on, what went, what was going on in the airline industry. So the classical example is Ryanair, the low fares airline. And then we have a little jet company that focuses on the niche the, where price doesn't matter so much because the value is so luxurious that uh, uh, the people in that niche enjoy the services of that little jet air company. Some may have even thought of uh, digital transformation reconciling both. So uh, how will that look like in the airline industry when we get out of that? Will there be an Uber for flights? And I think that is uh, an interesting uh, scenario and uh, many experts see this as to be very likely. So this was what you had in 2019. You pretty much knew how to get out of this red zone into uh, 
lucrative areas where your strategy would deliver the success that uh, would translate not only in survival, but uh, outstanding performance for your organization. And then 2020 looked good. And you know what happened? Of course, we've seen this a couple of times. So clearly for some, it didn't really look good. Demand went down, revenues went down, investments went down, uh, equality, some, uh, uh, some segments of the populations around the world are more affected than others uh, in their loss of health, unfortunately also lives, and um, certainly also opportunity uh, when it comes to employment and making money. Um, the hospitality industry has been severely affected uh, now here in Switzerland. Uh, the restaurants and uh, the hotels uh, are uh, suffering again from, uh, uh, from a lockdown because uh, the numbers are not looking so good. So there's many more, but we also know uh, that the money supply is uh, larger than ever before. Uh, debt is no, uh, no big issue these days. The stock markets are uh, relatively up. And online sales are thriving. Game companies uh, cannot uh, code fast enough. So uh, we see there are two th sides to this. And uh, the question is, do we have to change our strategy? We know that this virus, once the vaccine is there and, uh, uh, and a sufficient number of people have taken it, the vi virus will be gone and the whole situation will go back to... Uh, some future in which we can make business again. Even as a restaurant, even as a hotel. Uh, the question is, what about our strategies that we had in 2019? Do we have to dump them? That is the question that I want to explore with you. And uh, the, why, why now? Why do we explore this now? Well, because uh, we are used to downturns. They're slow and uh, they're easy to manage. You've done this so many times. Uh, last, year, uh, last year, we had uh, uh, in, um, in uh, some areas the first patients, and it wasn't really clear what was going to happen, but we have uh, experienced in spring uh, the first lockdown, and it has been rolling uh, through around the world through the rest of the year. And now uh, we were asking ourselves at that time, what would come next? Uh, what has come next is that uh, after the first lockdown, we are now in the second lockdown. And um, the serious question is now, what is coming next? How many of those do we have to go through? How much of this, what we're experiencing, is uh, going to stay? And how are we going to deal with that? Do we have to dump our strategy? Do we have to tweak it? Or do we have to pivot? Or do we have to just uh, persist with it? That is the challenging question I uh, uh, want to discuss with you. Um, having talked about doom and gloom and double, uh, double, double, uh, double lockdown, I want to uh, just know from you in the chat very quickly, what is the shape of the uh, economic uh, development going forward that you see coming? Please type this in the chat. Uh, is it a J, so uh, an upturn? Is it a U-turn? Is it going to be a V-turn after the second lo lockdown? Or is it going to be uh, a W? Japan is going through the third lockdown right now? Is it an X? Is it an I, a, a drop without end? Or is it L, bottoming, bottoming out? Or is it an M, which is uh, a more, more pessimistic version of a W? So uh, I see this, you see this. Yes. So all of you who choose for M and Ws, uh, you see this as uh, continuing a little bit longer. So you think that we may have uh, the nth lockdown. Uh, for those of you who have um, less complex uh, characters, uh, it is a, a one-time affair out of which we are going uh, out. I uh, uh, thank you for this. I am especially grateful for the fact that you didn't have an X because this is the, the end of it. You know, there is no way out of this. 
and uh, so that's that's positive i i like that and um you know uh, let me skip this i just want to uh, show you show you some results here um for um perseverance and pivoting when it comes to uh, countries dealing with covid so this is uh, the european union and you see that um that um that that we're you know we're very much on top of uh, of the world really uh, unfortunately this is deaths attributed to covid you see that uh, sweden is doing uh, uh, very well and switzerland is uh, uh, is in, in uh, the middle is in the average um let me just uh, show you what is going on in uh, other parts of the world and you see that that uh India, Iran, and Russia, and Indonesia are uh, uh, keeping up with uh, some parts of, uh, uh, of the European Union, but uh, uh, this would be here. And uh, China is, uh, is of course, uh, since uh, quite a long time uh, doing uh, extraordinarily well on this. Um, and when we look at the numbers, we see that over the period of, uh, let me just switch back here. Um, over the period of the summer, something uh, uh, went uh, awfully wrong in uh, in uh, several countries, and uh, that may be the effect of uh, changing and not persevering with some of the policies. So, uh, let's go for something more uplifting. Yes, you're right. Uh, let me just uh, take some comments here, Rick. You're right. Not everyone is reporting the same data. Absolutely. So comparing countries is very, very difficult. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, thank you for this sh uh, in Kyrillic, Victor. That is helpful. This is really cool. Um, so I show this mask because I want to have an uplifting uh, interlude before we go on. And uh, the uplifting interlude, of course, is that no one ever cared about this product category until, let's say, uh, February, uh, at least in most parts of, parts of the world, whereas in Asia, it was much more common to protect others from your regular sneeze or cough. And uh, now it's, it's a great market opportunity, and we see young firms and designers uh, going right into this opportunity. And uh, you see, there is already a plethora of different designs and uh, people are really making money with this. And you see that uh, here at the bottom, you have uh, uh, politicians uh, wearing their masks, uh, emblematic of uh, what they stand for. And uh, we have uh, prime ministers and uh, outgoing presidents. And uh, uh, so the is, there is a market opportunity. That way, uh, that's what I wanted to uh, to show you. Um, now here we are with uh, a little little question. It's a very uh, it's a prolong pro prolongation of uh, the the comical interlude that is supposed to distract you a little. Okay. In your um, in your Zoom rooms or in your uh, offices or at home where you are, take a pencil and just jot down where you are on this. It's a poll on restaurants and holidays, and you know now we will not likely have uh, uh, long distance holidays and enjoy wonderful uh, restaurants uh, in any uh, time soon. But um, I just want you to to um, Go through these questions and quickly, without thinking too much, answer them. And uh, take a note on, uh, uh, on your pad. You don't have to share this with anyone. I just want you to take a note of this because we come back to this later. Can you give me, uh, yes, I don't need the nuts. Thanks a lot though. Uh, I don't need the answers. Um, if you want to share them, that is fine. Uh, but you don't need to share them. This is for you. This is this is for you. This webinar is for you from IMD for you. So, um, do you are you okay with this? Give me a quick uh, um, chat. Okay, yes. So answer all questions. You need to answer all four questions, not only one. Okay, okay. See, Lisbeth is done. Uh, Ivan is done. Uh, Mats is done. Nadia is done. This is great. Perfect. Um, 
Sunil, yeah, Yulita, Ricardo, yeah, Ali, Alice, uh, Reka, Esther, fantastic. Okay, um, so stick with the numbers and we'll come back to this. Strategic leaders are often seen in the public and they are evaluated by the public. Not only presidents or prime ministers or, uh, or uh, publicly uh, elected officials, but also CEOs, uh, chief strategy officers, business unit leaders, leaders of teams. Uh, all leaders in the business world are assessed, are appraised. Uh, you know this through uh, 360 uh, exercises that you probably have gone through. And uh, I crudely summarize, I crudely summarize here now. Uh, we often celebrate leaders who uh, stay their course, you know, fight against all, uh, all odds and uh, strong opposition and insist in uh, their original uh, objective and approach to that ob objective. But at the same time, at the same time, uh, we also admire um, strategic leaders who are able to see that um, things have changed and they change their course quickly. So we appreciate uh, leaders who persist, but we also appreciate leaders who, who change the direction of their organization. And so the question is, um, which one is better? When should we use which approach? How can we reconcile them? That is, I think, uh, at the crux, how we are going to come out of this with confidence until uh, at least 2025. So let me give you two examples here. Um, Sometimes leaders are heavily criticized for, uh, for changing with the wind. Uh, in different cultures, you have different weather winds. Um, there is a, a probably a Europe Eurocentric uh, one here with the, uh, with the uh, rooster on top of uh, some uh, building. And this is uh, one that uh, uh, looks like uh, from NASA, but it is actually sold in uh, Indian supermarkets. And uh, uh, all of those, they have something to do with uh, adjusting towards conditions. So in the meteorological sciences, of course, uh, it's all uh, much about wind. So uh, the wind gods are always important, not only for the airline uh, industry, but uh, uh, for many others as well. And uh, depending on uh, uh, from where the wind blows, leaders need to adjust or not. At the opposite end, we also appreciate leaders who are uh, foundations, who are rock solid, who are um, pillars of uh, something that they hold up. In the center, you see um, Atlas. You see Atlas and uh, Atlas carrying the world. So uh, we, to some extent, rely on uh, this guy if you follow and, uh, uh, if you follow and uh, appreciate uh, Greek mythology. I'm just looking at the chats. Uh, I'll uh, respond to your question, uh, Helle, um, in a couple of minutes. Excellent. So in a VUCA world, we need to uh, change according to the needs of the market and customers, Herman. That is interesting. That is good. Um, and uh, uh, let's explore this together um, because this, this adjustment to customers is interesting. Uh, the classic example would be no one ever asked for apps on a telephone. So if you ask customers, they would not have uh, told you, I want an app on my telephone. So once they saw an iPhone with apps, they liked it. So seeing made them uh, realize that they liked something they had no idea of uh, beforehand. So sometimes uh, following customers is, uh, is good, but uh, they, they change their opinions uh, very frequently, frequently as well. So uh, the weather wane purely may not be enough. And being uh, a static column uh, supported by a pillar or 
a pillar in an organization that doesn't budge and move uh, may also not be optimal. That's the, that's, that's the challenge that I want to explore with you here. Um, so you may have, uh, have seen this. Uh, these are flip-flops and um, this is uh, the lady who is not for turning, Margaret Thatcher, a classical example of uh, a leader who has had a, a big influence. Uh, controversial, but a big influence. And uh, recently, Boris Johnson, whose name and whose face you see on uh, the flip-flops, has been accused of flip-flopping. Uh, on several issues, including uh, COVID, Brexit, and so on. So uh, leaders who are in the public uh, realm, they get a lot of uh, criticism all the time. So Boris Johnson is not the only one who gets a lot of criticism, but it uh, uh, fits uh, very well. It's actually very interesting to see that, uh, that Boris Johnson, um, a couple of years ago, designed his own uh, flip-flops. Um, but uh, the point here is, is it good to never turn or is it better to turn all the time? And how can we reconcile this? I see, Valerio, you have a, a, a comment here. I believe the vision should be firm and rock solid. Strategy and behavior, so yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. You, you are unbundling this a little bit. You bring in uh, flexibility into this. I like that a lot. Um, must have, humble, adaptive, yes. Engaged leadership is required from uh, Francois Xavier, yes. Low ego, very, very, very nice, very important. Um, what are the uh, major strengths? Yes, we'll, we'll address this. Um, I think the low ego is, is important, but uh, you also need to have a strong ego to become a leader and uh, to uh, be confident in the direction that you are pointing out for your colleagues. So uh, low ego, yes, uh, and, and no. Uh, let, me, let me unbundle this more. When you look at these uh, CEOs of uh, CEOs and former CEOs of uh, the largest corporations on the planet, uh, GM, Pepsi, and IBM, uh, when you study their biographies and their accomplishments as leaders, you will find that it is not a, a pivot, perseverance choice that they have made and then stuck with, but they have pivoted and persevered uh, several times on several issues. And I think that is an example that uh, we want to uh, become more aware of and explore more. Because uh, your strategy will always be tested not only by COVID. There will be another emerging technology that will disrupt your business. There will be a political change that disrupts your business. Business, A legal change, uh, re regulation regarding taxes might change. Um, there will be uh, global issues such as migration or uh, a new pandemic. Um, there may be socio-cultural changes that uh, uh, disrupt your business model. Have you ever thought of all these uh, hat manufacturers? When uh, McKinsey was founded, one of uh, their uh, ideas to explain to business people uh, what consultants could do for them and why it would be good to listen to them was that they would uh, adopt the style of lawyers and lawyers were, 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 uh, were wearing hats at the time. It was uh, customary for uh, uh, the business people to wear hats. Where are they gone? A sociocultural change. Um, how many of you are wearing uh, trousers? No, not, of course you're all wearing, wearing trousers, but how many of you are wearing ties in front of a Zoom room, uh, in, uh, in front of a Zoom? In Zoom sessions, how many ties are worn? So uh, the tie manufacturers uh, may be up for some sociocultural change that uh, limits their growth potential, to put it mildly. Uh, demographic change, uh, economical changes, of course, and then physical changes, global warming, 
um, uh, is, is happening, climate change is happening, and it impacts uh, different regions uh, dramatically. Uh, I spent uh, a lot of time uh, happily in the Netherlands, the low countries. Uh, for the low countries, global warming uh, matters a lot. So what is it then exactly what we mean when we say to pivot? Let's say the common understanding is to turn quickly. And that is loaded with positive things. It means you are agile, you're innovative, uh, creative, uh, you are capable of uh, doing sudden, uh, unexpected changes. You uh, dramatically turn, you're flexible, um, and you, you're lean, and you're kind of like a startup uh, who uh, starts doing one thing, figures out that it doesn't fly, and then continues with another thing. So that's where this comes from. And it's loaded with positive, uh, positive meaning. That's why, why it's so attractive uh, to many. And there are many examples uh, for where pivots are needed. So in the car uh, industry right now, uh, everyone is scrambling to change from combustion to electric uh, uh, engines. And uh, that's not so easy. Uh, in the food business, suddenly with uh, global warming and greater awareness to uh, uh, the impact of uh, the food chain, uh, it has become possible to eat burgers that had deemed to be impossible. Uh, some are made from uh, 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 vegetables and some are uh, more uh, artificial and innovative. So uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, movement that, that many manufacturers need to make. And um, then we, of course, have, uh, the, have, have, have undergone the pivot from working in the office to working from home. How fast did that go? How great was that to see the organization Turn on a dime, it was amazing. From face to face to online. Uh, we do that too, you do that too. I think we are all in this together. And so turning quickly is great. And it has advantages and it has disadvantages. I want you to, uh, oh, there's a great, uh, great uh, uh, list of, of comments. Let me just go through these comments and then uh, I want from you in the chat some advantages of pivoting and some disadvantages of pivoting. So plus, advantage, minus, disadvantage. Let me just read the, the chat here. And um, WITO is uh, working in the office and working from home. That was... Uh, Yes. Plus is agility. Yeah, Christina, thank you. Uh, ag agility is, is, is positive. Yes. Um, so give me other uh, upsides, so other benefits. Adaptation, quick reaction. Yes, first to market, speed of response. Pivoting is uh, offering distinctive solutions. So uh, you anti-fragile, so it's not so uh, um, uh, easy to break. Uh, flexibility. Disadvantage, people may not know where you stand on issues. Yes, positive is active. Yes, minus costs. If you pivot all the time, there are no economies. Yes, on economies of scale, for example. Instability, if you pivot all the time, that uh, introduces a lot of, of chaos and, and, and change in the organization and you have to cope with this. It's tough for many people. Very little cons uh, consistent uh, co communication on the why, yes. No deliverables, uncertainty, cost of options. Great. Great stuff. Keep it coming. High long-term investment. You're on it. You're on it. Resilience. Yes, very super important. Resistance from community. From community, from other stakeholders. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. So, um, and I... I Yes, capital intensive, losing, not pivoting people. Yes, interestingly, interestingly, sometimes uh, the reason to pivot is to um, encourage people to go. 
keeping people engaged. Yes, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, list that you're putting up there. It's much better than, than the, the short list that I drew up. Yes. So I drew up uh, uh, these here, uh, but they are captured by what you have been saying. Um, and yes, please, when you chat, please send to all uh, uh, participants that's uh, more useful so you can see the richness of uh, uh, the the insights that you are uh, sharing with each other. Um, so yes, there's speed, adaptive, it's creative, it, uh, it, it requires an open mind and uh, it's very changeable, it's very opportunistic sometimes, it's a bit breathless if this happens too often and it may be reactive. So you're never ahead of the curve but you're kind of uh, um, chasing something. So let's, let's change to persevere. If we all agree that uh, persevering means to sustain efforts, then we immediately see that there is a lot of good stuff that comes with sustained effort. You know, your children go to school and uh, what if they pivoted after the first uh, three weeks out of school? So sustained effort is important for learning. Sustained effort is important for improvements. Sustained effort is important for innovation. Uh, so uh, yes, pivot is super uh, sexy and everyone wants to pivot uh, apparently, but uh, uh, there is a lot, a lot going for perseverance, a lot. And uh, the the positive associations with perseverance is that it, uh, it has to do with uh, endurance, continuity, surmounting difficulties, overcoming obstacles, withstanding pressure and doubling down and uh, reinforcing um, uh, previous efforts. But Kaizen, I mentioned it, yes, I didn't mention it, but obviously Kaizen, uh, continuous improvement is, uh, is a part of this, is a, a very important part of this. And um, I, I just gave you uh, a couple of examples here. So um, these include um, from invention to improvement. So um, um, uh, colleagues and I and uh, um, our MBAs are working together with uh, a great company, uh, EMS, and they are in uh, medical healthcare. And um, they are um, trying to uh, uh, broaden the acceptance of a great invention. And that requires a lot of improvement. Uh, hanging in there, you know, you have a wonderful patent, no one wants it, what are you going to do? Pivot and throw it on, in the bin? You have to persevere, that's what they're doing. Um, there is another group of our uh, EMBAs and uh, colleagues where we work together on uh, how the Eurasia group is uh, persevering in turning political analysis into political broadcasting. Uh, we all are engaging in making working from home into the office at home. So continuous improvement, persistent, sustained effort to make the uh, substitute working from home into the preferred choice. And I think this uh, uh, is also the case for online programs, um, as some of our uh, um, clients tell us. Good. So I want to um, ask you to give me another storm of reasons that you have not yet exhausted that speak for perseverance and uh, against uh, uh, it. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of perseverance? Uh, write only thing, uh, things that, uh, that you haven't written yet. Uh, EMS is a company name. Um, Persisting as a steamroller is a must, Manel. Uh, that is very tough. Be resilient. If, as Ivan, a, steven, a steamroller flattens everything. Yes. Um, group think. Perseverance. If you have, yes, like-minded people around you and you together persevere, yes, you're digging yourself into a hole possibly. Yes, absolutely. 
Higher, stronger, faster. Rene, motto of the Olympians. Thank you for this. Absolutely fantastic. That's it. Perseverance. You don't get onto the pedestal without persevering for years and years. And my heart goes out to them because uh, they thought they would have their peak moment in Tokyo this year. Uh, and uh, let's hope that they'll have uh, their Olympics next year. So uh, that is absolutely fosters learning, core value, sustainability, building on strength. Uh, Jenny, thank you. Thank you for this. This is absolutely fantastic. Um, let me just, uh, uh, for time reasons, just uh, uh, proceed with this. I want to uh, field some questions at the end. Um, there is clear focus when you persevere with something, you know what you're doing and where you want to go. Uh, there's clarity and there's the opportunity for great intensity. Um, and uh, it is sustained over time. But the downside is that you're irresponsive to customer requests, demands, pushback, and uh, you, you may be stubborn. You may be static, um, immovable closed to external information. So there are a lot of good things associated with uh, per uh, persevering, but there are also some downsides. And then um, now let's rethink I, you have still good stuff coming up, endurance on long-term goals, cultivate serendipity. That's interesting. That is trying to to create something that is stable and fusing this, bringing this together with something that has instability in it. I like that. Um, I want to offer you something that is in uh, the line of what, uh, what uh, Pazdan has, uh, has pro, uh, proposed. And um, I want you to um, have a look at my four pathways for you in 2025 and um, see that I've broken up our dichotomy, do we persist or do we pivot into our, you know, the usual four box matrix. The four box matrix offers us uh, the opportunity to think broader, think in alternatives that we haven't seen and um, that is, I think, important. Um, I'll answer uh, some of the questions in the chat in a minute. Let me just walk through, uh, through the model here, and then I'll uh, ask you for examples before I share mine, and then we are uh, ready for uh, one more case study and uh, uh, questions. So when we resisting, resisting change, because we don't, like to do anything else that we have done before. And we are reactive in seeing what's going on and we're trying to um, resist the tsunami that's coming towards us by dugging in, dugging ourselves in, uh, that may be a strategy, that may be a strategy. So when a tornado, when a tornado is approaching and you have no time to escape anymore, the best thing is to seek shelter underground and wait until it's over. Hoping that uh, the tornado is not sucking you out of the shelter. So um, this is clearly a strategy, uh, but it is uh, not necessarily one that you would associ associate with success, thriving and confidence going into uh, 2025. When we resist and try to do a pivot, then we are undermining our efforts in two critical ways. One way is we see that we have to change, but our resistance makes us change only so much. The other way is we are resisting the change, but understand that we need to pivot 
And therefore, we only come up with pivot ideas that really make any difference, don't make any difference. So against convention in this framework, uh, the questionable corner is the upper left corner. Usually it's the upper, uh, the, the left uh, bottom. Now, when you are reactive, but you are uh, determined to stick it out, that's a strategy that can lead to success because it helps us to uh, focus on what is central, persist with that, and adjust what is not central uh, record, uh, regarding uh, or to meet the, the needs of the moment. Deliberate change, pivoting, and persisting at the same time is the interesting option. And that is what, uh, what Padwan was uh, speaking to, uh, where we create some way of uh, uh, flexibility, changing what we are doing while staying the course. How is that possible? How is that possible? How can we turn and not turn? And I think that's uh, uh, worth exploring. We need to explore what deliberation is. Pivoting and uh, perseverance uh, has uh, not necessarily uh, this antagonistic relationship, but we need to understand what pivoting really means. Pivoting means finding the central point on which you can turn. The central point is something that gives you great stability and is not going to change. The rest can change. And uh, I, uh, um, I acknowledge that uh, uh, that sounds hard, but we uh, need to understand that our organization with all the activities and all the uh, uh, systems, structures, and uh, um, things we have been doing in the past uh, cannot, uh, cannot be optimal for 2025. So we need to find what the core is in this organization that gives us the pillar on which we can turn. So that is, I think, uh, a way to reframe uh, um, pivoting and persistence. And we need to deliberate uh, in three ways. We need to be aware of change, and you get examples for this right after this. We need to explore the central point on which to turn and then turn, and then turn and go for it. So um, this is um, where I want to uh, briefly uh, show you uh, an example that you know. Um, the awareness of uh, change um, was uh, there, uh, but it is very hard for a large, large firm uh, to understand what is really the core on which they can turn. And um, as sad as the decline uh, of uh, this great company is, um, there are still good uh, uh, parts that are trying to uh, uh, find their way again. Um, other firms in very similar industries in very similar conditions have uh, um, made the pivot. For example, Philips. Philips also started with the image of the light bulb that you can, uh, that is, is, uh, is still here. And started with the light bulb, but now they have nothing to do with light bulbs anymore. They're in medical equipment and uh, so it's very different. Um, so now let me show you another uh, example for a pivot and perseverance. Uh, this gentleman is, uh, is uh, not so young anymore, but he's uh, flexible, creative, and agile enough to do a pivot. He recently uh, made major investments in um, trading companies in Japan. And I don't want to go into trading companies at length, uh, but uh, the point here is that he has understood where cash flow comes in almost with a guarantee and he made the pivot. It was a very substantial pivot. 
it moved markets. But then, you know, when Warren, Warren Buffett does something, uh, doesn't it move markets? But I think that's a very interesting uh, change. It was very unexpected. It was the surprising moment and uh, uh, quite an interesting example. So finding the central point on which to turn is absolutely key. And we have great companies who've done this over the years. We have Nokia, uh, who came from paper pulp and uh, have changed into mobile telephony. And now they're into networks. And uh, Huawei Technologies also came from uh, more humble origins at the beginning of uh, China's growth spurt. And now uh, you know the recent uh, uh, headlines for them, about them. Uh, we have an example of Nissan. Uh, I just give you the logos, but behind that, of course, is they have been going through a lot of pivots uh, and perseverance. Um, moving to the U.S. market was a big pivot for a Japanese firm, and persevering there to succeed was not easy, but they did both. And uh, now they're trying to get into um, into stronger into electric, uh, uh, electrically propelled vehicles. And uh, that is another pivot uh, where they're already showing a lot of perseverance, uh, but it is hard because they have to change fundamentally. For Tesla, it's easier. They don't have to pivot. Uh, they have to just uh, persevere with what they have uh, thought of the right way uh, from the start. So it's, uh, uh, it's very hard to find the central point when you have a lot of legacy, a lot of success in the past, because then there are many contenders for what that central point could be. Uh, if you are relatively smaller, relatively younger, it may be much easier to find this central point on which to turn to persevere. Good. Uh, let me just go uh, to your comments a bit. I don't want to. Okay. Persist and pivot both. Yes, I think this is you. You need to pivot and persist. I, I think that is that is very very important. And when you are persisting, you need to stay open enough to understand when it's time to uh, pivot. Amazon. Yes. Okay, I absolutely. So, uh, Setio, uh, great point. Amazon at one point understood that they're doing something very well that could be uh, extremely useful also for B2B customers and not only for us uh, uh, purchasing uh, in their retail uh, 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 unit. And uh, they developed Amazon Web Services, absolutely. Another example for a fantastic pivot in recent years uh, is uh, 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 Satya Nadella in, uh, in Microsoft, so uh, where uh, uh, the emphasis on data and digital and service has uh, come uh, much more to the fore, driven by a deep conviction that customer uh, centricity is key. And uh, uh, for that reason, I think we have seen uh, the stock share share price developments over the last uh, years. Um, yes. Yes, Mark, you're right. Uh, even Warren Buffett is not without fault. He has invested in airlines before the crisis. That's absolutely correct. Um, yes. Yeah, PMI, uh, great example. Yes. Can a firm's distinctive competency be a central point? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but it may also be something that is still at the periphery and needs to be uh, built on, built out. So uh, let me move uh, move on. I uh, have um, how to drive the company to identify the central point. Willie, that is a fantastic question. Thanks for that. Uh, I'll uh, go into this uh, right away. So here's a little case of a company that was producing glass, pressed glass. And uh, they were having uh, severe competition from uh, low cost glasses. And because these glasses that you see, you know, this is not really, not really differentiated. And uh, so in terms of value for money, the customer were not choosing uh, that. And so they had to figure out how to survive. 
and per persevering would not have been an option uh, because the, the cheaper alternative was just as good. So they had to pivot the, the way they approach selling glass, making glass, um, providing glass to customers. To which customers? So uh, they had to completely reconsider what they're doing. And what they then did is they invented a milk glass and sold it in gift packages. And it was a smashing success because at the time, no one had a dedicated glass for milk only. Uh, this one is the original uh, milk glass. And uh, it came in uh, packs of two uh, great surprise for uh, those who were uh, gifted the milk glass. And uh, that was a smashing success. And when they realized uh, that they could sell more milk glasses, they came up with ever new designs, ever new designs. And uh, they developed an engine to generate these designs. And uh, fantastically, uh, that went so well that uh, people had, uh, had enough milk glasses. People didn't want milk glasses anymore. And again, uh, persevering with ever greater variety of, of designs and shapes, uh, would that have been enough? They have done this for a while. It did very well. But again, they came to a point where they had to pivot. And uh, they came up with a solution. Um, and on this side, you see what they did uh, over uh, a period of 20 years, generating in different product categories, uh, the same uh, variety of designs. So this is uh, hard liquor, this is uh, coffee, uh, espresso, cappu uh, coffee au lait, cappuccino, and water glasses, and so on. And they used uh, um, the cachet of uh, leading designers until they figured out that uh, now the kitchen, the space uh, uh, in uh, our living rooms and our, uh, uh, in the spaces where we eat has become so crowded with very colorful and loud uh, utensils that we can buy at very low prices from uh, competitors who have uh, come into their market. They have pivoted again. And now they're persevering with a design that is uh, very clean. And uh, let's see what the future holds uh, for, this, um, for this new approach. So you see that pivoting and perseverance are not mutually exclusive. They have to go uh, together. They have to uh, be reconciled by strategic leadership. Uh, whether it is uh, you uh, by uh, the CEO, she or he, or by the team uh, that uh, integrates a lot of um, different ways of thinking and views of the world. Arnaldo, like yin and yang. Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, IBM as business process service provider. Absolutely. Yes, a, cha a dramatic change from uh, hardware to software. Yes. Um, I think that uh, is, uh, is, is very, very good. Do you have continuous change? Yes, continuous change. But pivoting is uh, more radical, uh, even if it is not necessarily a technological breakthrough. And uh, perseverance is uh, much more incremental and uh, requires a sustained uh, uh, focus and concentration on a task at hand. And uh, the challenge for strategic leaders is to be able to uh, sweat the detail, but stay open for environmental change and uh, uh, the signals that indicate it's time to make a pivot. And in order to make this pivot, to recapitulate, uh, we need to have this central platform, the pillar on which we can pivot. Good. So do you have questions? I saw that uh, Seppo has, uh, uh, is only investing in companies he understands. Is this also pivoting? Well, interesting. Um, that is very interesting. So Seppo points out that uh, Buffett uh, invested uh, in Coca-Cola and Wrigley's chewing gum and others, uh, Dairy Queen, and that he, uh, that he understood trains. And so, um, yes, that's true um, to some extent. But um, um, if you pivot from one continent to another, that's, that's a big step. 
Um, and um, uh, Buffett has made this uh, important step uh, early on by uh, moving into electric vehicles in China. So uh, very smart, uh, uh, smart investments uh, very early on. So if you allow uh, pivot to mean also switching continents and industries, then certainly uh, investment decisions have a lot to do with pivoting. Let me see how to identify leadership pivot. Uh, Latif, thank you. That is a very, very good question. Um, I have two minutes left, unfortunately. Um, let me be uh, honest with you. It is really difficult. It requires a lot of data, a lot of analytical uh, horsepower, and judgment. Judgment that comes from experience, from uh, talking with customers, being around suppliers, knowing your partners in the supply chain. Uh, knowing your stakeholders, what are their demands? Uh, when are they saying so, uh, so much more about uh, ESG that uh, you understand that you can no longer insist only on financial performance and you have to pivot? And uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, a lot down to judgment of leaders. And how to make these judgment calls is not easy. Uh, it is a science uh, in of its in uh, in itself, and uh, I think there will be efforts made to uh, better understand how uh, uh, good leaders make judgments. Uh, but the wisdom of leaders, I think, that's the next frontier about which I'd love to discuss with you soon at uh, IMD. So. Um, I have another couple of uh, questions here. If uh, um, you allow me to go over a few minutes, uh, then uh, I'm happy to do so. Um, if, if you have to go, then uh, I fully understand this. After all, we're in Switzerland and punctuality is important. Um, Microsoft moving from licensing to uh, software as a service, very, very interesting. Uh, if you change uh, your partners in the channel, if you change your uh, entire market approach, you could also call this pivot, but I don't want to go down the road and calling every, uh, every minor change a pivot. Uh, but I think that is a big change. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Stay safe and uh, healthy, everyone. Keep, uh, keep well.